It's Shinobi, and we are bringing you episode 264 of Block Digest at block height 678,796 on Sunday, April 11th. And oh, is this so awesome pushing and reading that off of my new block clock instead of block stream info. Yes. Sponsorship. Straight Russian time around here. No, spent hard earned free government money. So what's up today, guys? I hear we uh, have gone trans species. Huh? What? What? E- Elon did something? No, that's the cue. Bring in the bomber. What? Uh, I shouldn't have done that, Dad, before we started. I think we lost our cat friend. It's a sad, sad day. Yeah, cat friend is busy. Begging for food, for attention, for justification for its existence. No, actually eating the food that they forgot to eat earlier. See, if you had a dog, that would not happen. Alrighty, though. Alrighty. So, I guess I cannot put off getting agitated. It was bound to happen. Yep. So, let's just get into it. Um, The last... Meeting for taproot activation um, led to a pointless, idiotic stalemate over whether to use median time passed or a block height um, for activation. So essentially whether to use clock time or a block height. Um, And charitably, the arguments respectively on both sides go on the network time side. that was used previously in BIP9. It's already implemented. It's much more tested. Um, but on the downside, um, it's theoretically um, something you can manipulate as a miner. And two, it's a little more complicated with weird edge cases. Um, block height, the argument, it's just a simple thing, a block height, much more difficult to play around with as a miner. <laughs> And um, a lot less edge cases to kind of worry about. And um, instead of coming to a reasonable conclusion based on logical debate and analyzing the upsides and downsides of both of these proposals, core developers decided to do a fucking coin flip to decide what to implement to activate Taproot on the Bitcoin network. That's right, the development process, instead of looking at the trade-offs between two things, flipped a goddamn coin. And pretty much- Where? What they did was pick a block height and then input um, a a randomness injection through a, a bash shell and then ran that when that block height came and network time one. But just holy shit. Um, I'm sorry. Is this the Ethereum community? Um, decisions by developers are being decided by a fucking coin flip. What the fuck is that? I mean, on to be honest, this is better than the Ethereum community. <laughs> I don't think so at that point. Like that. That's absolutely, utterly absurd. Like, if that's how engineering decisions get made right now, then holy shit, what what the fuck is going on with Core? Still better than Ethereum. (laughs) I'm super mad because they didn't even account for the fact that the coin could have landed on its edge. I mean, no, it's not, Janine. 
like the the entire rationale of development in this space is that reasoned logic is used to arrive at rough consensus and that means you can't just like janine please like you, you can't just make decisions based on arbitrary whims you argue logically the technicals you go forward or not based on reasonable criticism of something or the lack of reasonable criticism of something you don't make decisions based on arbitrary things like coin tosses like this is literally just interjecting a, a complete departure from the entire philosophy and process of development in this space and it, it's absolutely ridiculous on the positive side even if the development community advocated responsibility for making a decision the decision still got made which is a plus one but it's not being done based on logic and reason now the chain truly rules like I, I don't think you guys are taking seriously like the kind of nonsense that this is setting a precedent for just arbitrary non-logic based decision making in what is implicitly with, with how things are going just setting itself up to be a bureaucratic entity that is just ignoring users ignoring the consensus on the feature itself and just arguing amongst themselves with, with bullshit ego like th this is not good like th this is not a funny thing this is development of the core implementation of this protocol going in a very idiotic and bad direction i don't even know if i can trust proof of purring anymore i mean i definitely don't think coin flips are a good option for decisions that have more complicated answers but given that both answers were relatively even i mean yes one could argue that having the block height would be better overall but um in general not a critical issue whichever one gets chosen so i feel like instead of spending several more weeks discussing this one issue um coin flip is fine for things that there isn't a lot of you know issues at stake to pick the wrong answer it, it's not though because it's it, this is not about network time versus block height this is about the fact that for months now developers have been bike shedding and arguing inane just minuscule nonsense stalling this whole process to the point where we're, we're now just deciding how to resolve that process with a coin flip like are that's you, absurd are you sure we can even activate taproot if bitcoin's logo is racist yes see that's where we disagree and if you like notice all of this started with just bip 8's not acceptable because bip 8 is bip 8 with lot true despite the fact that this has existed for four years now the, the community consensus was used this going forward a lot of the developer consensus was used this going forward and then when it comes time to turn something on all of a sudden out of the woodworks come a bunch of people who go no we're, we're against this and dragging things on and on and, and now we're flipping coins over things like th that that is not a logical process to arrive at rough consensus that's arbitrary decision making through a specific group. Hard fork incoming. All right then. Sounds emblematic of the world right now. Remember this the next time we are at the same stupid place. I vote with the cat. Well, Janine, I guess you want to take us into the next one. Yeah, so in episodes 64, when we were still in double digits, and 248, we talked about something called mobile coin. If you are not already familiar with the basic details, you can check out both of those episodes because we talked about them a lot. But basically, it is an Intel XGS, X, 
SGX based uh, private blockchain, the whole shebang. Uh, and I have been critical of, of mobile coin since basically the initial white paper came out in 2017. And essentially those criticisms have not changed because the design of mobile coin did not change in response to criticism at all. Um, if anything, the criticisms have gotten bigger. And as of April 6th, when uh, basically it was announced that mobile coin would be integrated with signal uh everyone suddenly basically jumped on the same boat as me um not following it for as long but basically everyone hated signal <laughs> uh there was a consensus among uh regulators and also bitcoiners and also other privacy coins basically they all hate signal now because of this and let's go into why so Andy Greenberg from Wired wrote an article titled Signal Adds a Payments Feature with a Privacy-Focused Cryptocurrency. Signal today plans to announce that it's rolling out the ability for some of its users to send money to one another with its fast-growing encrypted communications network. To do so, it has integrated support for the cryptocurrency MobileCoin, a form of digital cash designed to work efficiently on mobile devices while protecting users' privacy and even their anonymity. For now, the payment feature will be available only to users in the UK and only on iOS and Android, not the desktop. As usual, there is no love for the desktop. Uh, but the new feature nonetheless represents an experiment in bringing privacy-focused cryptocurrency to millions of users, one that Signal hopes to eventually expand around the world. Marlin Spike, uh, as in Moxie Marlin Spike, has served as a paid technical advisor for the project since its inception, and he's worked with Goldbard to design MobileCoin's mechanics with a possible future integration into apps like Signal in mind. Marlin Spike notes, however, that neither he nor Signal own any mobile coins. Well, um, that may change soon. For now, it's listed for sale on just one cryptocurrency exchange, FTX, which doesn't allow trades uh, for U.S. users, though Goldbard says there's no reason that U.S. exchanges couldn't also list the coin for trade. Signal chose to roll out its uh, mobile coin integration in the UK in part because the cryptocurrency can't yet be bought by users in the US. And then, uh, so that's the Wired article. Then Joshua Goldbar, the CEO of mobile coin, posted a very long paragraph on Hacker News that says a few points. One, started mobile coin to fund Signal. Let me read that again. He says, I started mobile coin to fund Signal. That's it. I believe that a world with a well-funded signal is a better place. In order for Signal to compete in the 21st century with messaging apps around the world, they need a payment story. MobileCoin is the only thing ever built that is protecting and fast that meets the standards of data retention Signal requires. So let's be clear. Um, the stated intention of launching this cryptocurrency is to fund another company slash nonprofit. Um, yeah. I don't know, lawyers in the house, is that uh, is that all good? Um, point number two, Mobile Coin Inc. intends to maintain an extreme minority of the coins once the dust settles. Yes, uh, that, cause, because that's currently not true, because there are, uh, when I last checked, about 250 million units total, and only 37 million have been distributed to exchanges and or sold to actual users, which means that the founder Lost you, you need. Really lost. Oh, give her a second, she'll be back. Do, 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 do. I'm trying to understand how an SGX based enclave coin is relevant if you're doing stuff on mobile or evidently on the newest generation of CPUs. I'm back. Go ahead. Okay. What was the last thing that you heard? Ah! Us screaming. Okay. Well, what was the last thing you I think heard? You uh, were talking about the distribution to exchanges, or maybe a little bit after that. Yeah. So basically, he says that um, it's important for us to get coins in the hands of users. It's important for us to move with correctness over speed. Um, of course, the reason for that. Him saying that is that um, there are 250 million total units, as far as I checked, and only about 37 million have been distributed so far to exchanges and or users, which means that currently the MobileCoin Foundation holds the majority of 
mobile coins. So yeah, um, that's why point number four, this project is four years of my life building real technology. This is not a pump and dump scam, you know, not to be confused with uh, what you're doing that very much resembles that. Um, and then concludes by saying, I welcome any questions I'm able to answer. Note that some questions revolve around tightly regulated areas of concern and may take longer to answer as I must check with outside counsel before replying. And he then proceeds to not really answer a bunch of questions related to Moxie's role specifically and issues created by the pre-mine not being fair, et cetera, et cetera. And someone else on Hacker News pointed out that the integration of mobile coin into Signal may lead them as in signal to not want to get rid of the phone number requirement that they currently have, which everyone has been asking for them to get rid of. Um, someone asked, uh, the UK also has receiver verification. If I try to send to an account and it doesn't match the name I'm sending to, my bank will warn me, how do you stop impersonation? And the answer was, Signal relies on phone numbers for ident identities. Other apps that integrate mobile coin may have a higher threshold for identification. So end quote, uh, the phone number is going to be probably kept for the identity layer in order for mobile coin to do some basic KYC, uh, or at least, I guess, stopping impersonation. So great. Um, yeah, the phone number actually turned into an identifier, not just a Sybil attack prevention mechanism as it was originally sold as. Uh, and then the mobile coin Git repo has an FAQ and it has had it since the launch many months ago, but I would like to remind everyone about one particular part. Uh, in response to the question, can I run a validator node without Intel SGX? And the answer is you can run the consensus service using Intel SGX in simulation mode. However, you will, you will not be able to participate in consensus with other validator nodes. Your software measurement will be different from the hardware enabled Intel SGX peers and remote attestation will fail. So yeah, um, consensus is entirely dependent on Intel SGX. Cool. Um, and of course, many people were asking why are they not just using Bitcoin or Lightning? Or if they, you know, think Bitcoin doesn't have enough privacy, maybe another privacy coin. And they've uh, spent a lot of time shit talking Monero. Not going to get into that because it's, you know, uh, I mean, basically they claim that the mobile coin is based on CryptoNo, but they actually are borrowing a lot of stuff from Monero, not CryptoNo. CryptoNo was a much earlier. Uh, project than Monero, so actually what they're borrowing from is Monero, but yeah, so academic uh, clarity and honesty not great here. Um, yeah, uh, so again, many people were asking why not um, Bitcoin and Lightning, and Moxie's response on Twitter to one person that really went around was, I think it'd be great to support it if it's possible to implement in a way that works well on mobile, is non-custodial, private, and fast. My impression is that it has a little ways to go still, but please let me know if you have ideas. Now, I get that there has been a lot of arguing about whether or not Lightning would have been ready for something like this, but I feel like um, we don't need to really get into that because it kind of misses the overarching point. According to Goldbard, it is more important for them to move with correctness over speed. So I think we can all agree that spending three to four years creating an Intel SGX uh, dependent private blockchain was a less desirable use of engineering time than optimizing mobile lightning clients, which yes, might have taken longer, might have not even been ready by this point, but maybe it would have been, as Matt Corallo points out. Matt Corallo has written a lot about how he's disappointed with mobile coin. Um, one, uh, let's see, one of his responses was, like so many in this thread, I've spent years defending Signal, even contributing some code many years ago that eventually became the desktop product. Also, like many of you, I can't uh, help but feel frustrated that we've basically been sold out for a garage quick scheme. As someone who has paid quite some attention to all of the repeated and common scams in the cryptocurrency industry over many past years, this is largely no different. A founding team, in this case including, sadly, Signal's founder, issues a ton of tokens, sells them to the general public or worse, VC investors uh, at a nice markup, pockets all the fund for use to help the community, 
Um, make no mistake, there is no technical justification for Signal requiring its own blockchain in order to get the payment through put they want. Um, the only justification given whatsoever for this, this approach is that MobileCoin wishes to spend their money to fund Signal, but with a big chunk of the funds people spending buying MobileCoin going to venture capital investors in the project and no commitments or even vague statements as to how Signal... Um, how signal how, or how much signal will eventually see um yeah like basically they had a bunch of other options and none of them had to result in them creating their own token it just doesn't make sense from any perspective so yes we can argue about whether lightning is ready um but at the end of the day i think we can all agree that this was a huge waste of engineering resources and also keep in mind uh, it is one thing to integrate a cryptocurrency into an app like Signal. It is another thing to create, invo involving the founder of Signal and the acting CEO of Signal, is another thing to be create your own cryptocurrency and then integrate that because then you have the added risk, regula the regulatory risk, that you have now created a coin. That puts you in a whole different class of people than if you had just integrated cryptocurrency into your app. Which, you know, if they faced any problems with that, they could just remove it and then they'd be done. But now they've created a cryptocurrency that they have to maintain, uh, that they have to, you know, now deal with regulators in different countries. Like, now it's their responsibility. That is something that, uh, well, hopefully Signal's resources won't be used too much on that. But clearly there are a bunch of resources that are going to be used on that that could have gone instead into development of an existing cryptocurrency that already does a bunch of things that this coin will never be able to do, uh, like be decentralized. Um, sorry, you can't. S SGX is just awful. Like, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think we can all agree that we're disappointed with this decision. And yeah, good luck pumping your mobile coin or whatever, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this is just a obvious transparent money grab that is going to drag signal into a horrible direction. But I feel like Matt in his comments made like he was just wildly hand waving there. And this is not the first time he's done that. Like as far as integrating something existing, there is no viable way for them to do that except purely custodially, which would require KYC from them to a much larger degree and mean they would have to become a you know money servicing business or do something like a, a side chain like fork liquid and use elements or integrate liquid itself but like lightning if any sizable portion of their user base tried to onboard to that in a short time it would just overload it and the sgx stuff that matt was talking about there is no way to scalably do that except literally have everyone's device hold the exact same private key sharing a single UTXO or, or have a bunch of clusters of people like that. And the instant a single enclave gets broken, everybody in that cluster or that UTXO loses their money. Like that, that is purely custodial in my mind. So it like, that their options were just a, a completely custodial thing or do a side chain. They should have just done a side chain. From a tech point of view, this SGX stuff seems to have a whole lot of attack vectors on it. And uh, at least according to Wikipedia, it's been dropped from the latest round, the 11th generation of core mobile and standard core desktop line processors. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, so they built it on something that's being phased out because it's been broken so many times. <laughs> like, on top of all the other scammy shit. Not only that, they're building a financial incentive to break it further. Like, <laughs> Yep. I think, though, like, the most fucked up thing is, like, your point about KYC, the phone numbers, and that's never going away at this point. Because, I mean, like, what other mechanism do they have to make sure that U.S. citizens don't illegally get their hands on this? Yeah, so, Caso, I should point out, the reason it sounds a lot like Ripple and XRP, well, for one thing, um, 
It is based on Stellar. That's what they based the blockchain part on. So, um, yeah, and Stellar is related to Ripple. So, yeah, um, that's probably why. <laughs> yeah, I think somebody put it um, when there was a request to explain it. It's pretty much just a Monero fork with bulletproofs using the uh, Stellar consensus mechanism. <laughs> Plus SGX. You don't have to tie proprietary money to a supposedly private chat app. Just FYI for anybody thinking about it. Yep. My, my, still my favorite quote from this whole thing is from the original Wired article that I like shit talked in 2017, where I think it was Gold Goldberg or what's his name? I can't. He, I'm like very tempted to say Goldberg, but that is a different person. What is this guy's name again? Um, Goldstein? No, not Goldstein. Goldbard. Goldbard, yes. Okay. So Goldbard, um, I believe he was quoted. It might have been something else. Someone else. Maybe I should check that. But someone from the Mobile Coin Project um, said, if you can't see the ledger, how can you cheat it? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm sorry, bro. Have you like read any of the literature behind any of this stuff? <laughs> Why are you asking that question? Forget literature. Has he ever took a basic logic class? I'm going to start a new coin, guys. It's called Trust Me Coin. Let me know if you want some. Have you ever heard of Ethereum? Um, it, it runs on proof of Bob. Um, pr pretty much you just trust Bob to update the ledger and never lie to you. And you can buy cookies with it, so who wouldn't want that? But I also, um, I have not looked into this. I, I, I am assuming, because I, I think I heard that they're, they're doing it based on traffic, like blocking traffic outside of the UK. But I'm very curious to know how they're actually going to prevent specifically Americans from using this. Um, because explicitly in the mobile coin Git repo, it says Americans are not allowed to use it. Um, it's not available to US persons or U Americans. Which um, I find funny because, like, effectively, we all know that that's not um, possible because all you need, yeah. Um, like, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I have some UK-based SIM cards. Uh, so I have a UK phone number, so I can look like a UK person. Um, and also VPN and several other things. So how exactly are you going to stop me from using this thing? I may already be using it. You never know. I, I already know to say that like wait for somebody to get a hold of a sim card like just get a hand to some and be like oh twitter look at what i got i've already talked to some felines some cats in america and they don't see themselves as persons they identify differently and they're already using mobile coin so there are ways around this i identify as a red coat and this is discrimination well, one thing this clears up, um, Naomi Wu has been yelling at Moxie for over a year about the lack of a warning for third-party keyboards um, to warn people that that could completely undermine the end-to-end -end encryption and signal, um, and it took him over a year to acknowledge that, to do something about that, and she's been screaming about what a greasy um, virtue signaling scumbag he is, and um, yeah, I think, uh, I think this kind of definitively proves her point. Yeah, there was also some complaints unrelated to mobile coin, or maybe related. I haven't checked whether this is part of the same update, but um, Sarah Jamie Lewis also complained that she had a group chat on Signal that she, uh, I guess, was an admin of or moderating or something, and she got locked out. And then, in order to basically like reinstate the group, she just said, I, I have to dismantle the group and kick out people who have chosen not to share names and avatars. Uh, and then she replied to that saying, I really need to stop treating Signal as the software I thought it was a few years ago and start treating it as the software it has become. The dumpster fire. Proof of marshmallow. You want encrypted comms? Go peer to peer. Alrighty. Are we ready for some quick updates in the mining world? Old peers go bad. 
Yeah, so this is kind of funny. Um because really based on this article, I can't even tell you guys which Bitmain this is. Because if everyone remembers Bitmain kind of split in half um between McCree and Jihan. Um so yeah, I, I don't know which Bitmain this is, but Bitmain is suing their biggest competitor, MicroBT, again. Flashback to the last time this happened. Um, it was a patent violation lawsuit over an absurd, ridiculous patent over using um, circuits in series in their mining chipboards. Yes, they, they had a patent on circuits laid out in a series a basic thing that's been done in all kinds of electronics for decades including all the other asics that were made so obviously um that case got thrown out and the patent was invalidated so back again this time um again reminder the founder of micro bt was a former bitmain engineer who designed their s7 and s9 back in 2016. they're suing him for stealing proprietary secrets after he left bitmain dun 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 so yeah um this is the the latest step in Bitmain slide into irrelevance after Jihan ran the company into the ground, um, betting the entire farm on a shitcoin and then splitting the company in half when um, he just melted down after his co-CEO was not okay with that. And so now they're, they're just going to try to lash out at the, the big competitor again who's eating their lunch slowly. So, yeah. Um, have fun continuing to slide down the hill towards death, Bitmain. Bye-bye. Kitty has some thoughts. She really liked that one. Slightly amazing that anyone is shipping miners right now. Dude, I just think it's funny with the fact that the company and assets just got cut down the middle after having, you know, money bleed forever, customers bleed after wrecking their balance sheet with Bcash. They want to throw money into litigation. It's like good strategy, guys. It's usually what you fall back to when you're busy and poor. So I guess next up. Riot Blockchain is purchasing um, a mining facility ran by Winstone US Inc. for $651 million in cash and stock. Um, so this is pretty much the uh, biggest hosting facility in North America. Um, and they're paying 80 million in cash with 11.8 million shares uh in riot blockchain and if you just give me one second i have to navigate through a bunch of open windows do 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 okay um yeah they have 300 megawatts of capacity um which can be quickly expanded to 450 megawatts. So if my brain is remembering numbers correctly, um, that should be something around the capacity that Blockstream's um, hosting services have um, in Georgia and Quebec. So yeah, Riot is expanding. And um, mm -hmm. let's just say... We should be going in the opposite direction. We, we shouldn't be conglomerating mining facilities and operators on this continent. We should be distributing them more. Because, uh, yeah, this is the kind of direction where in a few years, we just have a small group of corporate entities that can have a happen and uh Funny shit starts going awry. It's 
it's kind of interesting. Evidently, they're buying this from a German company. The German company is going to end up owning 12% of Riot. And the German company, which is called Northern Data, says they are going to use the cash proceeds from the transaction to focus on and further implement decentralized, multi-site, scalable, and ESG-focused strategies. Mm -hmm. Get but after it. Let's just say I have some suspicions about some variables behind the scenes here, but we'll have to see how that plays out with uh, what, what comes out publicly about this place over the next year or so. How much do you want to bet they're just going to give all that money to CT or uh, however you pronounce the new uh, Norwegian firm? If my hunch is right, I think there's something completely different going on there. But yeah. So, there has been lots of talk about a certain incentive that would, would occur naturally at a large scale with Bitcoin and how this incentive would be very important to Bitcoin succeeding. And I heard a country just got infected by it. Yeah, this one's kind of fun. Uh, I imagine the infection happened a long, long time ago, uh, just given the numbers involved. But it has come out lately uh, that Ukrainian government officials happen to own a large stack of Bitcoin. So through uh, processes on um, asset ownership transparency, it has come to light that uh, Ukrainian officials and government own at least 46,000 Bitcoins, which is worth uh, $2.6 billion or more. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I wish we had such forward-looking American political officials, uh, but it sounds like uh, at least one of the guys owns 18,000 of those Bitcoins. So. Uh, Imagination says either it's very well connected or he got those a long time ago. Uh, with the Minister of Foreign Affairs following up with 6,500 Bitcoins and uh, another uh, regional council member owning at least 5,300 Bitcoins. So uh, there's definitely some incentive over there, it might seem. Yeah. I don't see Ukraine banning Bitcoin anytime soon. Has anybody searched Bitcoin in the Hunter Biden email trove? Uh, Somebody should do it. I don't know if I want to see that many pics with Hunter Biden's dick in them. Can't confirm nor deny. Alrighty. <laughs> so... There has been an interesting development in the tale of BitMEX. So I do believe the last time we talked about this, um, Arthur Hayes was considering the idea of surrendering himself um, if he could secure a bond agreement in Hawaii. And essentially... Um, try to set up a deal where he could go through the court proceedings there, but still be free to spend his time in Singapore uh, where he's living. And he has done that. Um, so he surrendered himself on, I believe the seventh and has a $10 million bond securing his freedom right now. So that, is I think the last of the outstanding people aside from BitMEX itself that charges were filed against um, in custody. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a very interesting saga to watch unfold in court because uh, yeah, that, that business did a lot of ballsy things over the years with no KYC and the, uh, the types of volumes they were running. So uh yeah, I think they're going to throw the book at him and try to nail him to the wall. And 
yeah, we're going to have to see how that goes because I'm betting, especially with the, uh, the resolution of the tether nonsense in New York, um, the U S government's probably getting really pissed off at not being able to get the people they want to get for doing the supposedly bad things. So, uh, yeah, I would not want to be Arthur Hayes right now. A mere ten million dollars to go home. Let's just say um, it is a hundred percent certain that the fact he said um, he could bribe regulators in the Seychelles with coconuts—that's coming up in court. Hundred percent, zero chance it doesn't, and that's going to be an awkward moment. Yeah, the SEC does not take coconuts or other commodity bribes lightly. Not at all. All righty. Well, are we ready for the latest incident of U.S. government entrapment? Oh, is that what this boiled down to? Mm-hmm. Love these stories. So, yeah, a uh, Texas man, Seth Aaron Penley, was arrested on Thursday um, in a plot to kill about 70% of the Internet by bombing an Amazon Web Services data center in Ashburn, Virginia. Ah, so, yeah, th- this is a tale as old as time. Um FBI finds some dude on crazy random forum on the internet saying crazy random things he wants to do that he would be probably totally incapable of doing by himself. Um, FBI approaches said crazy dude and pretend to be crazy dudes who want to do the same thing as that guy. And then, oh, what? What? What's that, man? You need some C4 to do this, Seth? Oh, don't worry about that, bro. I got some C4 for you. I got all the C4 you'll need. We'll we'll hook you up with that. And what happens when Seth goes to pick up the C4 from his new crazy buddy? Surprise! We're the FBI. You're under arrest. And, uh, yeah. That's the latest entrapment update. But... Really, the thing that kind of worries me here, especially after the Kentucky Christmas bombing that everybody seems to have completely forgot about right next to a major AT&T hub. um, Yeah. There are a lot of crazy people out there very pissed off in this country right now because of the last couple years of politics. And... Most of them could probably never actually accomplish anything themselves, um, which is usually how these things go. But they want to fuck up critical communications infrastructure, critical infrastructure like that. That's where their anger is going. And we all know how this works. Why is the government doing the same thing they always do worming around and trapping these people and pushing them into actually doing shit and, and facilitating getting a hold of the things that they could never get a hold of without the government doing this entrapment game and then keep pushing this narrative as something a lot more plausible and accomplishable than it really is. Why? We all know how this game goes. Why are they doing that? FBI, the premier arms dealer for crazy people. But we all, like, there's a narrative being painted here, and we all know what they like to do after they paint a narrative. Yeah, let's wish them a little ill luck at that. Oh, I wish them lots of ill luck at that. Alrighty then. So here's an uncomfortable bit of uh, potential information that is floating around out there. Um, Somebody on raid forums 
is claiming to have a KYC database from Paxful, the peer-to-peer -peer exchange, um, with 4.8 million users in, and employees compromised, including names, date of birth, gender, address, phone number, email, and passwords. Um, yeah, so if that's legit, that is not good news for Paxful users. And realistically speaking, it's a little more risky than at least if a lot of the best practices for trading on markets like these haven't changed since I used them. Um, this is potentially a lot more dangerous than, say, Coinbase or, or Kraken because these markets also need traders. They need people providing liquidity. And in my experience, um, the guys doing trading like this, like when I was using local Bitcoins, they were not running around keeping things on a secure hardware wallet in cold storage because everything was just coming and going, coming and going. And they had some not insignificant amounts of money just sitting on hot wallets, on, on phone wallets. Um, and, you know, e even though Paxful, there's more of the uh, less face to face interaction, I still kind of imagine with coins coming and going, coming and going, some significant um, portion of those users are probably not doing something really substantial with key storage. So if this database is real, that's a lot more of a juicy target for somebody who maybe want to go do something physical like attack you or break into your house because in all likelihood, those coins are, or some amount of those coins are probably not stored anywhere near as securely as somebody pulling off of Coinbase or cracking right into cold storage. So I really hope this is just a giant scam. Can't wait for the post KYC world. Clubhouse's database dropped this week too. It's getting kind of popular to drop databases. Like I said the last time when we were talking about the Facebook stuff, I just keep thinking about that comic, The Private Eye in the post everybody's data got leaked world where we all just said, fuck the internet. This is why we need to digitize ourselves. <laughs> so what fun times is going on with HSBC? Oh, this is in the financial overlord moralizing section of the show. It's uh, going around uh, with some email screenshots that HSBC... Uh, now has an issue with companies that have virtual currencies on their balance sheet. Uh, and they have decided that Brits using them for brokerage services are no longer allowed to buy MSTR shares or MicroStrategy, like a sailor's company. Uh, this is kind of an interesting one, and I know different uh, brokerages have taken different tax on this. I think it was Morgan Stanley. Uh, not letting people buy GBTC there for a while um, and maybe up to present day, um, if I got that right. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's really fun that these brokerages are going to uh, filter out S&P 500 company stocks from what you're able to buy. And I, I imagine they just want to keep their hold on uh, banking as per usual, especially in England, the home of central banking. So this, this could get interesting when we have more and more popular companies. Like we didn't hear about this with Tesla, right? Um, if Walmart was to buy a bunch of Bitcoin, would we hear about this with Walmart? Uh, but evidently they've decided MicroStrategy is enough of a proxy for BTC that you should not be holding. It'd be fun to see them do that with Walmart. But yeah. yeah. Capital controls, man, like they're starting to freak out 
and the more they freak out, I bet we're going to see a lot more of this. Yep, they're going to cost themselves trading fees until they ultimately capitulate. Did you know? I forget. Did Biden ever um, roll back that OCC decision from the Treasury under Trump um, regarding um, risk management with banks and how you can't discriminate against whole markets or category of things? You have to show demonstrable risk based on the individual. Not that I've heard of. Well, let's hope he doesn't because, um, yeah, as long as he doesn't and institutions try going overboard with that kind of stuff in America, they can get slapped on the wrist by the Treasury. I think Treasury might be busy running around like expanding their bathroom facilities or some shit at this point. <laughs> let's see. Speaking of special categories of people and trade groups. Yeah. So Fidelity, Square, um, Paradigm, and Coinbase have launched a new trade group to shape the way Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are regulated. And I'm going to say the same thing I say every time this happens. Fuck you. This is just the same old bullshit and it will go the same old way and i'm betting it's going to be a lot worse this time given all the fatf shit hanging in the air these companies aren't going to fucking give a shit about bitcoin about you and me about what we can do independently on the network ourselves without them they're not going to care about favorable regulations for that shit they will cave they will compromise. They will give ground on any of that shit necessary to not have a bunch of shit come down on their head as a business that doesn't fuck with their services as a business. And that's the only fucking way this is going to go. <laughs> Period. So, yeah. And, and, and it really, it blows my mind looking around on, on places like Twitter and seeing how many people in the space are just cheerleading this like, Oh, good thing. Jack, the champion of Bitcoin, he'll protect us. No, he won't. No, he won't. Coinbase is part of this. Do we really have to explain the complete apathy towards their own users they've demonstrated over the years? This isn't going to do shit except try to craft regulations favorable to these businesses and they will not give a shit what kind of collateral damage happens to self-sovereign ways to use bitcoin when they're in that negotiating process that's not the point of these things i think it is fair to characterize these as particularly defending business interests uh we'll just have to see what comes out of that how many of these companies do you think will actively put up a fight so that they don't have to do absurd things like KYC your, like, I hate this fucking term, self-hosted wallet um, before they'll, they'll withdraw or, or let you withdraw your money? How many of them? Maybe Square. Maybe. They'll probably cave in the end, though, if, if regulators try to take things that way. Well, it actually makes them more powerful if, say, regulations against people having wallets or more friction, people getting money to their wallets came to exist. That means more coins sit on their platform, which make them more powerful as businesses. Yep. It's the exact same reason and incentive why you see major exchanges like Bitstamp, like Kraken, like Coinbase refuse to integrate things like um, Liquid because, hey, wait, make it easier for coins to, to leave our platform? No, we want them to stay here because we're trying to be the new Bitcoin banks. Good day to fire up this, people, if you're looking for some coin. You're here. But yeah. 
same old shit and it's really fucking sad how every time this happens there's more and more people cheerleading it like this is going to go anywhere good all right the best for last we have started this episode with a coin card endorsement and we're going to end it with a coin card endorsement version 4.0.2 has released for a cold card firmware update two cool new things here there is a special pin you can set for the brick me mode except when you do that it will have a fake hour-long countdown um, by default um, so that it, it looks like the device is still functional and hopefully the idiots don't realize it's bricked um, woohoo and then also um, there is a feature on the device so that you can set a default um, countdown every time you log in so that no matter what you will have to keep the device powered on and wait um, whatever the uh, countdown time is before it'll actually log in and let you use it. Um, that used to reset every time you powered down the device. Um, it will actually persist now on the next power up and continue the countdown from there. So if you use that feature, big UX improvement, very nice. Um, as well, you can now set um, BTC, I hate these fucking denominations, MBTC, bits, and sats. All you need is BTC and sats. Um, and a feature um, for users who only use the SD card in air gap mode to completely disable the USB port, although it will still be enabled by default. As well, um, a bug fix to fix the formatting feature to wipe the SD card and a bug fix to reject transactions who have larger amounts in the outputs versus inputs. It's a bug fix. I think it's silly because it would be impossible to submit that to the network, but it's a bug fix. Woohoo! I just want Rodolfo to know if he's listening. Uh, I don't own a black clock yet. That's a problem. Pay for it, bitch. I paid for mine. Sponsorship. It's not sponsorship unless, you know, they give it to me. I gave them money for it. Make those Mark IVs rain! Oakley dokely though. That is final thoughts time. Well, you probably know what mine is. Go! Well, uh, the last episode had a bunch of anniversaries, and this one does too. Today is the two-year anniversary of Julian Assange being arrested and his uh, asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy being revoked. Um, something I can bring up, which I don't think I brought up before, there is a, a former foreign minister of the UK, Alan Duncan, who um, I believe the book may have been published by now or it's upcoming, but basically he's had this exclusive deal with the Daily Mail to publish excerpts of his upcoming book, which is basically just his diary while he was foreign minister. And... There are some disturbing entries in one of the articles with these, uh, you know, excerpts about uh, several entries that mention Assange and uh, leading up to his arrest. And the one on the day of his arrest mentions like Team Pelican or something. There was basically a team of people in the UK government, according to his own diary entries, that spent... Uh, in his own words, months of diplomatic negotiations to convince the Ecuadorian government to revoke his asylum. So for anyone who thinks, oh, it was Ecuador's decision or maybe the U.S. was pressuring him, no, it was also the U.K. government. And he admits this now publicly in his upcoming published diary that he spent, you know, U.K. taxpayer money and time uh, to to negotiate this and he was proud of it. He talks about how he did interviews after the arrest and there was a commemorative photo and he was trying to hide the smirk on his face. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's grounds for, you know, a investigation into why the UK government was, uh, so 
strongly involving itself in the decision of a foreign power while, you know, being in their country, still a foreign power and who they get to keep in their embassy. Um, but yeah, this is the two year anniversary of multiple governments fucking over a journalist. Maybe we'll get some vice premier of the UK talking about how or acknowledging that they have two presents specifically to render oil unto Caesar. Yeah. It's in vogue now in the US. The US, the UK, and Ecuador can all suck a fat dick. Especially Ecuador. He's an Ecuadorian citizen. The government is obligated to fucking help him there. And they haven't done shit after fucking stabbing him in the back. And he was even more officially an Australian citizen born and raised before this. And the Australian government has also done very little. Um, they have started to do a little bit more, but they have also done very little in terms of protecting their own citizen. Fuck Australia, too. I mean, I don't think you need to. They're kind of already fucked, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Foot, you got anything? I have to say, I don't know why uh, I, I, a lot of people shit on Australians. I don't find, I mean, I find the government of Australia to be absolutely horrible and the laws to be absolutely horrible. But I took a literature class in an Australian uh, writing and it was very good. I appreciate Australia from that point of view. There is nothing funnier than telling a Kiwi to fuck off you subhuman Australian scum. And watching their reaction. Why? New Zealand is even better because it has hobbits. No, New Zealanders get angry when you call them Australian. <laughs> uh, nothing from you, Fudd? Uh, just the usual summation. Beware the narrative, people. Alright, I guess my final thought uh, can be serious for once. So me and some others um, at this point um, are planning on going through with a BIP8 equals true client to activate Taproot. Um, was a lot of arguing and no consensus on the lot parameter amongst developers, but it is clear at least to me that there is consensus for BIP8 amongst the community. And there's enough support to, in my opinion, safely do lot true with a long enough timeline. Um, so there's going to be a meeting on IRC at 3 p.m. Um, Eastern U.S. time um, Tuesday. Um, the bottom of the show notes, there's the announcement on the dev mailing list as well as the channel um, it's going to be in. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. If you want to kind of help debate the logic, maybe help reviewing pull requests that have been done lately, um, pop in the channel and um, yeah, fuck all of this bullshit. Let's get this thing turned on. Ship it. So on that note, hope you enjoyed it, punks. We'll catch you later. Meow. Meow. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>